Hello and welcome to another episode of Atlanta Film and TV's Conversations with Atlanta Movers and Shakers. I am your host, Mandisa Johnson. Today we are having a conversation with actress and advocate for inclusion and representation of Latinx talent in media, Denise P. Santos. Denise is best known for her roles on Long Exhale, MacGyver, The Resident, and Family Blood. Hi, Denise. How are you today? I'm doing well, Mandisa. How are you? I am good. Thank you for joining us and answering a few questions for us. So we gave you a brief introduction. Could you share with us about who you are and what you do in the Atlanta film and TV community? Well, you kind of introduced me very well there, but I'll expand. So um, I'm Denise Santos. I'm an actress. I'm the co-founder and producer of Latinas in Media Atlanta and most recently Latinx Filmmakers Atlanta. Uh, so basically uh, I started in Atlanta about maybe 11 years ago oh. and really took it to a whole new level maybe about nine years ago. Uh, being here, I realized that there were more people like me, but not enough visibility or platforms to showcase us. So I got together with two of my friends and we co-founded Lima. And we showcased uh, actors, directors, writers, uh, their original works, live performances in front of the industry and the community. And with that, it's taken a whole other level. We've been able to get ourselves into Atlanta Magazine uh, on the cover of Oz Magazine, thanks to the amazing writer, Daniela Cintron. Uh, she is a Latin journalist in town and she wanted to grace us on that cover of Oz Magazine. And that even brought on even more. I wanted to make sure, like you said, I represented for our Latin talent here in Atlanta because we are here. It's, it's a very small community, yet we're all very much intertwined to the rest of the industry as well. So I wanted to make sure that uh, we created a platform that I continue to advocate and speak and share and highlight our talent here in Atlanta. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I, I know the cover that you're talking about. I really like, I like that cover. It was beautiful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was just um, that, that picture by one of the best photographers in town, the writer. I mean, just the way it came together, it, it really was a blessing. It was beautiful. Yes, it was. So can you take us on your journey about how you started to where you are now? Absolutely. Um, it's interesting because I, I've always enjoyed acting. I always enjoyed, I was a single and an only child. So I was that kid in front of the mirror with a microphone kind of talking to myself in front of the mirror and doing my own thing. And my mom decided to like put me in like John Casablanca's or Barbizon or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was a very shy child. So that really kind of pushed me to want to explore that even more, which to a traditional Latin mom that took her for surprise, of course, because traditionally uh, Latin families don't want to encourage any type of creative outlet because they don't want you to struggle. And I totally understand. Uh, but from there in high school, I took drama classes. Um, I did some background work and I worked on short films and I'm originally from Miami, Florida. So that's okay. where kind of it all started out for me. And then when I moved to Atlanta in 2009, I had at that point kind of taken a break from acting and decided and I got remarried, had my twin boys. And with the encouragement of my husband and my family, they kind of pushed me to get back into it again. So I started acting here. I got myself into classes, uh, started you know booking some short films again, even did some background work here just to kind of get familiar with the industry. And I mean, where I am today, it, I, would, it, I would not be here without my family. I would not be here with the people I've worked with and collaborated with. It's been an absolute blessing to, to work with the people I've, I've had in my life. Wow. Yeah, I like that when you said you used to use the microphone in the mirror. I think a lot of kids have, like when I was younger, I would literally think I had somebody watching me. I thought I was on TV, like before reality shows was a thing. I thought there was, I had an audience. Yes. 
I mean, you know, we all have kind of like that story within us that we want to use our imagination. I think, you know, as kids, we have so much creativity that's just flowing through us. And at a certain point, it kind of stops, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, so that that makes me feel good that I'm not the only kind of silly person over there that was talking in front of a mirror to herself and pretending with a microphone with a hairbrush. (laughs) Yeah, that's so that's so funny. I'm sure that was cute. So you you talked about how your mom got you involved in like, you know, the John Casablanca. So maybe you could share a little bit more. So my next question is growing up, did your parents recognize your love of the arts? And if so, how did they nourish your gift to facilitate growth? So like I mentioned, it wasn't really encouraged. And and I don't know if this is something that maybe happens to a lot of uh actors or people in the industry that have like these traditional Uh kind of this traditional upbringing where they want you to become a doctor they want you to become a lawyer they don't want you to struggle they want you to have that degree and that um that license to be able to have a career you call your own and have a title and so that's all my mom wanted for me um i was raised by a single mom so she wanted the best for me and of course i did not want that for myself and so she didn't necessarily encouraged me she still supported me along the way and to this day she supports me and celebrates me but it was not encouraged however I encouraged myself and I learned to find my own voice I took uh, drama classes in college and behind her back you know (laughs) kind of did my own thing without her knowing sorry mommy if you watch this (laughs) but you know it's it's it, it was calling me and although she didn't necessarily want that for me she'll see me now and she'll see me on tv or you know I got that first paycheck I'm like mommy see I made money off of this you know it's, it's, a, it's a legit paycheck mommy I can make a living <laughs> right. so then she's like okay good job you know trabajo, mi amor. you know good job my love so um I still found my own path regardless I think that's definitely something that I hope people take from this interview is kind of find your own path Mm -hmm. because you might hear the opposite of what your heart is calling you to do but if you really want to make that happen for yourself I mean do what you got to do to pursue that work hard dedicate yourself because I I I definitely feel like I'm I'm 42 now and I'm 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 finding my voice and Mm -hmm. I'm loving this place that I'm in so right 40s the 40s I've known a lot of people find their way like find yes. it's true that they're truly um interested in and do really well and thrive but you said something really important that a lot of other people um i it, i interviewed an asian actress isabel do last year and she was sharing with me about how her parents were concerned about her making money and then i interviewed someone at in January Elena Mil- Miller she's a makeup artist and she was saying that she has a degree in biology and I was like okay you have a degree in biology I would have <laughs> never like I, I really wanted to know like how she ended up in makeup and she was telling me that um she was never really good at doing makeup her her her, her mom's did not wear makeup so she just kind of I guess learned on her own but she was just saying how she really wanted to be a doctor because those were the jobs that her mom saw doctor and lawyer were the two jobs so a lot of parents are concerned about you making money like you know they don't want to see their children being starving artists and I mean that's understandable like we tell our son you know he wants to get into music where we tell him to have something to fall back on just in case. But if it does go, obviously yours is going well, then okay. You know? Yeah. And that's, that's interesting because it seems like the makeup artist kind of found her own way as well, you know, and even with your son, it's kind of like we as parents can't help it. Right. We want to, we want the best for our kids. And of course my mom said it to me, when you become a parent, you're going to realize <laughs> And she was right. She was totally right. You know, we, we want the best for our kids. And I have a 19 year old as well. And she was a ballet dancer for 11 years. Oh wow! And the pandemic kind of shifted that 
reality for her a little bit, you know? And so she's resetting herself. You know, my sons were going on 13. They're kind of finding their own path as young boys. So, I mean, it, it it's, it's, uh, it's about us encouraging that gift, that if mm-hmm. there is something in them that they want to pursue, that's great. Make sure you have something that you also do. That's going to pay the bills because that's the reality, right? Like this is, there's no other way to, to pay for the creative aspect of it unless you have a day job mm-hmm. and I mentioned earlier I I have I'm a teacher as well I'm a oh, I, special ed okay and so I I that's what I did I, I worked with children I work with children to this day I work with an amazing organization um and and I, I wouldn't be here today as well if it wasn't for the people that have supported me at my job knowing right. that I do yeah. this and are saying I know that this is your number one you know, we'll take whatever hours you can give us, go do your thing. I'm very, very lucky to have that, you know, that day job, you know, the actress with the day job, actor right. with the day job. Yes. We got to have yes. that. We got to support it somehow or another, you know? Yes. So I know you said that you worked with special needs kids, but I didn't put two and two together that you were a teacher. So my husband is a, a elementary school assistant principal, and then I will substitute teach mainly at his school whenever I can. So yes, that is so important and something that I always tell people when they say that they want to shift from doing background, but scared they're going to miss out. And I'm like, well, if you work a day job, you'll have the money to pay for headshots. You'll have the money to pay for acting classes. You can attend networking events. Like if you're that you want to hone your craft and if you let your people know what, you know, your boss know what you're trying to do, you know, at least you let them know. Um, Yeah. So that's really important. It's true. It's true. There's no way we can do this without that. I mean, and I think as long as we keep that goal in our mind that, yes, this is what we're doing to make money. And, you know, maybe you still love that that job that you have during the day and that's okay too, but it's also okay to pursue it. It's okay to be a mom and, and pursue a creative career. It's okay to be a parent and have two jobs to make sure you're pursuing your passion. If anything, we're teaching our kids you know, that this is doable, that this is possible, that we're able to have that creative life and support a family. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there's definitely yeah. that old thinking of, you know, you can only do one thing at a time or the things can't be intertwined. And I don't believe that. I believe that it can, you build your life to how you want it to be, right? Right. And you surround yourself with what you want to surround yourself with that's going to encourage you and lift you up. So you, you got to find that job that's going to support you, the people that are going to support you and lift you up and your passion eventually is going to start become, you know, coming into fruition because exactly. it's, it's only a, it's only a matter of time. Right. So we are going to take a break, but we'll be right back. Son, I want you to always remember this when it comes to doing the right thing. Let nothing stop you. Sometimes you got to make our decisions. You can break a rule or two. But as long as it's good in your heart, and you're doing the right thing, let nothing stop. Okay? to Atlanta Film and TV's Conversations with Atlanta's Movers and Shakers. I am your host, Mandisa Johnson. Today, we are having a conversation with the lovely Denise P. Santos. So you are fluent in Spanish and English. 
can you talk to us about how your being bilingual created opportunities for you? Absolutely. Um, again, my mom was like, in Spanish, you speak, in, in at the house, you speak Spanish. Actually, mm -hmm. Spanish was my first language. Although I was born and raised in Miami, I spoke Spanish first and I learned English in school. And that's the way it always was. And she kind of really pushed me on that. So I am fluently bilingual. Um, because of that, it really has given me tremendous opportunity to work on a variety of diverse projects, whether it's commercials and industrials, film projects, um, network bookings. I mean, it's it's been a, a blessing to have the, the English and Spanish in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. um, now, that's not to say that anybody that doesn't speak you know, isn't multi, is multi, isn't multilingual. They're not, you know, they're not worthy of any of right. this work. Of course we are. There are Latin people that don't speak the language, but they're no less Latin than that. But in my case, I, I'm very lucky that I speak both languages and I speak a little Portuguese too. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been amazing. I worked on, I mean, I just recently did uh, two short films that will be coming out within, you know, the end of the year um, that are Spanglish, bilingual productions that because of the fact that I speak English and Spanish have really, really pushed me to be able to work on those projects. Um, I did a commercial as well that required me to speak in English and Spanish. It's It's only been beneficial for me. So I consider myself very lucky. Yes, I can see that and I don't share with many people often <laughs> I speak a little bit of Spanish um I was certified to speak Spanish at Disney to guests so it was like really like simple interactions and I've taught K through three I know enough to um and I've also been mistaken for um being Hispanic because my hair is naturally curly so while I worked at Disney people even when I didn't wear my pen, people would still come up to me and I'm like, whoa, like, <laughs> how, do you, like, how do you know? How do you know I speak Spanish? So yeah, yeah. I think especially, at, was this in Florida? Was this in Orlando? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think especially in, in, in Florida and Orlando where, you know, a lot of places you don't, you're not required to speak English. You kind of grow up in Florida and many times you don't ever learn English. Mm -hmm. they, they, that's the assumption because there are many people that look like you in the Caribbean in Latin and the Latin Caribbean countries and islands and South America, which is a shock to some people, mm -hmm. you know, but it's yeah. not to me, I, you know, coming from Miami where right. we're surrounded by Caribbean people. And um, so I'm not surprised that people would assume that you speak Spanish, but yeah. Yeah, that's great that you speak Spanish. I can practicar. We have to talk together. <laughs> yes, for practice. And when you were saying about you can speak a little Portuguese, and I was like, yeah, I would. When I worked at Disney, I had a few friends from Brazil, and just hearing them speak, and I would be like, I look and like, uh, I know what you're talking about, and even like French, my stepsister took French in middle school and she wrote they had to write like a little book and I read I remember reading through the book and I said I translated everything she was like how did you know that I was like I don't know maybe because it's kind of similar to French I mean just yeah. the Spanish language so yeah because it's what those romantic languages kind of are similar so yes exactly thank you for sharing sharing that so um, could you share with our viewers, how do you advocate for inclusion and representation of Latinx talent in the media? So how it started through Latinas in Media Atlanta and then now through Latinx Filmmakers Atlanta, we wanted to make sure that we created a platform and that's where the showcases got started. And we were able to do two live showcases and one virtual showcase during the pandemic. Okay. And basically just sharing our platform, advocating, um, share it. we have our social media platforms that are very active and I'm able to sh share, repost, reshare, you know, um, share resources, links and opportunities for other Latin people to be able to 
reach out to the rest of the nation and the world sometimes. Um, the Casting Director Society um, of America, they share many opportunities for auditions. There's one that's out there right now looking for Latin actors and it's shared on our Latin uh, our Latinas in Media Atlanta page. I think that that's the only way to do it is by basically sharing highlight, sharing your platform, highlighting, advocating and speaking up, mm -hmm. you know, when it's time all the time, all the time, it's, there's no other way to be able to advocate for it. So that's, that's how I have found that I can lend my voice and my platform is by highlighting our people here in Atlanta, highlighting all Latin people of all, all colors, shapes and sizes in our communities, in our industries, throughout the world that are really doing great things to showcase that, right? That right. we're not only one stereotype, we come in many different colors, shapes, and sizes. We have many different nationalities and backgrounds. And if we continue to highlight, spotlight, share that that's who we are, it's gonna only create a, you know, a, a ripple effect and then a wave to, to showcase to other people around the world who may not know and and have that much information about us. Right, right. And I love seeing other Latina actors as well as African-American actors on like named shows. Cause there was a show that I watched and I really wanted to watch. I forgot about it until I watched Abbott Elementary. And then there's the show that comes on afterwards. It's about a journalist. It's called um, Not Dead Yet. It's on, is it? on ABC I think that's the channel that it comes on and Gina Rodriguez plays the main character and that show is hilarious I don't know if you really I've been wanting to watch it actually yes yes I I saw the preview and I forgot until I saw the commercial I was like oh I'm gonna watch that I don't know if that was the first episode but that's that show is <laughs> really funny I like it so I'm, I mean, just the, the trailer alone has my mm -hmm. attention and yeah. I, I love Gina Rodriguez. I think she's a very talented actress. Um, she's an, another advocate also as well. Okay. And, um, for me, it's incredibly important to follow people that are, that are like-minded and, um, I need to check out that show. It's been on my list of to watch and I, I follow the, I follow the page. So yeah, that's a that's a good one. Thank you for telling yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, and I, I'm a journalist, so I was like, oh, show about a journalist, but I don't write obituaries. But it was really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know like the the story? Like, so from what I understand, isn't that she's like basically talking to dead people? Yes. So right? she he was hired as an obituary writer. But the people that want her to write the obituaries, the dead people come back to life. So I don't want to spoil it because but it please, please oh, don't. <laughs> was like, what? I'm watching The Last of Us right now. Okay. I've not seen that. Pascal, that's a good one. Okay. Oh I'm going to have to, I, I need to, I'm going to up my TV watching next week. My kids are out of school next week. So oh my gosh. It's so it's on HBO Max. Okay. Um, and there's five episodes out right now, and it comes out, I think, every Sunday, I think it was. Okay. Um, so we like binged it yesterday and we were supposed <laughs> to watch it with my daughter. And she goes, Why would you not wait? <laughs> but I'm like, well, you're thinking I want to watch it. I can't watch it at late at night. I just pass out. I'll be honest. Uh -oh. with you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Atlanta Film and TV is big on networking and building relationships. Could you share with our readers and viewers its importance and how you benefited from networking and building relationships? Oh my goodness. Um, for me, over the years, it's been incredibly important to build friendships and relationships mm -hmm. with people in our industry. I respect very much what everybody does and how hard they work for it and how much talent there is in this industry that I just want to create friendships. Yeah. I'm not going into it like, Oh, what can you do for me? What can I do for you? Mm -hmm. But how can we work together? How can we collaborate together? How can I help lift you up? Are there resources or jobs that I can share? Are there um, friends I can get you in touch with um, and vice versa? Right. Because when one of us wins, we all win. Mm -hmm. Right. So 
I don't know if that's necessarily considered networking. Maybe it is, but I really just, I, you know, maybe it's an only child thing. Mm -hmm. I, I want to create a community that I didn't grow up having. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to film school. I didn't graduate with a BFA. I'm a single, I'm an only child. So I want to create that, that family that I really didn't grow up having. And um, if I can surround myself with those friends that are going to lift me up and I'm going to lift them up and that's called networking. Amazing. But right. um, yeah. yeah, I, I, it, it's, it's been beautiful to, to see and hear and experience the projects that have come, come up because of friendships and relationships in this industry. I have collaborated with so many friends um, within my circle that, um, the amount of projects have been beautiful and successful and so much fun. And it's just creating uh, greenlit ATL actually says, yes, create, don't wait. Mm -hmm. And um, that's exactly that. I've got together with my friends. We collaborated. We're both like, we're all like-minded people and we created, we didn't wait. We wanted to put something together to put out there and showcase ourselves. And um yeah, it's been amazing to collaborate with so many friends and and have the relationships that I have in this industry. It's been it's it's an amazing, powerful, strong, talented industry in this town. Yes, it is. And that's what Atlanta Film and TV is to build like a community, which is why I really love I mean, it was even before um Atlanta Film and TV. I was just talking to somebody about this. I've been doing events before Atlanta Film and TV, but we like to put them on and it just lets me like be creative as well. And then bringing people together, um, like the last networking event we had in Stone Mountain at the Vibrary Wine and Book Bar, Carol Shaganal was our, the talent agent, she came, like, she came and she consulted with the first 15 people and as far as I know two people got signed from that so that I mean that was that was exciting yes. thank you yes and it was just like you know an opportunity I like to create opportunities for people that you wouldn't otherwise get because you don't really know too many people who don't who aren't signed that actually get to sit face to face with a talent agent and then show them their materials and you know actually have a conversation with them so that was a way of me bringing people together and creating friendships and networking and all that. So, and that's beautiful. I mean, that's what, and I, I think very similar to like Greenlight ATL to what you have with Atlanta Film and TV. And then with Latinas and Media Atlanta, we've been taking a long hiatus. It's kind of me at the helm right now, but I want to bring that back. I want to bring back the live showcases. I want to bring back the opportunities to. Um, get us all together in a room, <clears throat> not just Latin people, please, everybody come, let's all network together. Let's, let's, uh, you know, lift each other up and let's, let's all be friends. Let's create a community because this community is only as good as it's, as it's people. Mm -hmm. And if, again, if we're all, if one is winning, we're all winning and we got to let the rest of the world know that we're here. Right. And I, we, I RSVP to one of you, your events before Christmas and I think it was like the day we got out for Christmas break and I was just like I'm so tired no I totally get that <laughs> <laughs> I totally get listen, but it was like next time mom with, a, with an MF and MFA Listen, thank you. I get it I get it <laughs> thank you so we are going to take a break but we'll be right back Welcome back to Conversations with Atlanta's Movers and Shakers. I am your host, Mandisa Johnson. Today, we are having a conversation with Denise Santos. Do you have a piece of advice for someone who is graduating from high school looking to pursue a career in film and TV? Um, the piece of advice would be to really value those relationships that you're building while you're in school. Mm -hmm. because all of you are coming up with that same passion and drive and imagine who you will be in five or 10 years. You're going to be in a completely different place, grown, having a, a higher set of skills, more knowledge. Um, 
stay to stay with that group of people that you're coming up with because you're all future creators, writers, directors, uh, you know, working behind the scenes, grips, crew, uh, you know, producers, actors. Those relationships, those bonds that you're creating in school right now are really going to be beautiful and important to 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 and will flourish over the years. Mm -hmm. So again, back to that networking and 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 creating that circle of friends and relationships that you that you want to um, have in your in your on your team and your side. Those people that you're in school with, you know, they might be you know your your next camera person and you guys will create something beautiful together. Uh, stick with it. Be consistent. Don't give up too too soon. Um, this is not something that's going to develop overnight. It's mm -hmm. going to take time, you know, like a flower, right? You you plant the seeds and it doesn't just grow overnight. It takes a, a while for that seed to sprout and for the stem to grow and the leaves to come out and for the the bud and the flowers to blossom. It takes time. It takes watering. It takes soil. It takes sun. Um, and the same goes for you. Stick with it. Uh, you know, you'll you'll see some beautiful things blossom if you stay consistent and and surround yourself by that people you're coming up with in school. That's a great piece of advice. So, do you have any gems? We call these gems great educational moments with movers and shakers that you would like to share. I do. So when I thought about this one, because many years ago, um, when I first moved to Atlanta, I was working as a featured uh, background artist on the movie 42, okay. starring Chadwick Boseman and Harrison Ford. Um, and I will this I will take this with me forever. Uh, at that time, I didn't really know who Chadwick Boseman was. Mm -hmm. And that I got to work on this film for five days and I was working in a core group. So we were a small group. It was a small crew. Um, it was the same people every day for that week. During lunchtime, we're all hungry. We're kind of like rushing to the food line to crafty to get something to eat. <laughs> and of course I kind of get in that line. And I, I didn't realize it because I kind of turned around and I saw Chadwick Boseman standing right behind me. And of course I, I take a step back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. Please go ahead. He's like, no, 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 you go first. And I will never uh, forget that, just that that one line that he gave me, that kindness, that kind of chivalry, that just consideration to let me go ahead and eat first. Um, be kind. You will never know who you who, who you are meeting on set. You will never know who you're bumping into in the audition room. Um, you will never know what kind of impact you're making on that person that you just said those words to. So be kind to every single person on set. Be respectful, be considerate. Um, be humble in the sense that you are where you are because you deserve to be there, but also learn to listen, to absorb what's going on. Um, I've taken that with me for many years. Rest in power, Chadwick Boseman. He's he's someone that's in in our heart and all of our in my heart and all of our hearts for many for generations to come. Wow, yeah, you're the second person. Well, first of all, that was a great piece of that was a great gem. Really like that. Be kind. Yeah, that's so true. Um, but you're the second person that said they worked with Chadwick Boseman on that film, and I think this other person said that they <laughs> Chadwick Boseman was trying to like literally like talk to them <laughs> like that's amazing I love but she kind of but she kind of like brushed it off because she was like I don't know who you are <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, that's hilarious <laughs> but she's you like, get thinking back on it she was just like oh as <laughs> you know you you have those opportunities and two and two don't quite connect until after the fact you're like oh okay Mm -hmm. that's happened to me that's happened to me if I if I did things then knowing the things I know now oh, things would be so different but you know mm -hmm. it took time to where right. I am today but that's a hilarious story that's really that's happened to me oh my gosh so many times <laughs> so do you have anything you else you would like to share with us um yes I do actually <laughs> okay so I um 
flew out to LA to work on a commercial that will be airing during Super Bowl Yay. on Sunday. Yay. So it is highlighting women in flag football. And I play the mom of Diana Flores. She is a star in, um, in Mexico uh, for her flag football team. And she's just been promoted to correspondent here with the NFL. So oh. she's 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 a mover and shaker herself. She's doing her own thing, and I play her mom in that commercial. So I'm excited to see that. Hopefully, it it I mean yeah, it, it should come up. It should be shared. Um, and then I I'm working. I worked on two films. Uh, one is Cooking with Claudia, okay. uh, written directed by Priscilla Torres and Vincent Bates, and then uh, La Gran Pase, directed by Ernesto Santi Esteban and uh, Maria Marin, and. Um, those are my bilingual projects. Okay. And those are some beautiful short films that should be coming out very soon. And um, if you follow me on social media, I'll I'll post information on on those projects as as more details come out. But yeah. And thank you for saying social media. So how can people connect with you? <laughs> I would love for you to connect with me. Uh, my Instagram handle is at Denise P Santos one. And then um, you can view my information on demo reel.com slash Denise Santos. All of my representation, my reels, my resume is up there. Um, Instagram is really where I post most of my stuff and updates and any news that's coming out. Um, I'm not so great about posting pictures, but I'm trying to get better. So um, you'll see some stuff up there. But yes, please, please follow me on my Instagram, Denise P. Santos one. Thank you. And thank you so much for answering a few questions for us. Thank you, Mendisa, for having me on today. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us. If you know anyone who could be our next Atlanta mover and shaker, Go to our website at atlantafilmandtv.com forward slash potential Atlanta mover and shaker and fill out the application. Once we receive your application, we will contact you if we are interested. Until then, I'm Mandisa Johnson. Take care.